Guys, Formula One is back. After a horribly long summer break, Formula One is coming back. Now, I wanted to make an interesting video because recently I checked out this really cool thing they released, which is the new Formula One channel for the, your Samsung TV. And I think you have it also on like Tubi or something, one of those other free platforms. But I have a Samsung TV. And one of the perks of a Samsung TV is that now we have a channel dedicated to Formula One content, which for me is phenomenal. It's fantastic and I love it. And I wanted to kind of do a video talking about one of the things that I think is really awesome about said channel. I typically watch F1 Friday, Saturday, Sunday when possible. I try to watch a practice session if I can. Saturday I'll always watch qualifying and then Sunday obviously is race day for those of you that watch Formula One. If you don't, well Sunday is race day. One of the drawbacks is there's a lot of stuff behind the scenes that you don't really see and like preseason testing, like I don't have access to that kind of stuff. And what's really cool about F1 TV, more specifically the channel, the Formula One channel that they released is it shows a lot of like backstage stuff, which is really cool. And what's even more exciting is it shows old races. So when I first booted it up, this was a couple weeks ago now, this is before summer break, because they were about to race at Spa, which I believe was the last race before this like month long summer break. And what was awesome about it was I was watching a race from 2004 when I booted it up. Like 2000, like 20 years ago. Like, it's, it's just the coolest thing. And that's why I wanted to make a video about this for those of you guys that watch Formula One. Or if you don't watch Formula One, this is a really cool way to kind of introduce yourself to it. So my understanding from how this works is it looks like the week leading up to a race, it shows you a lot of races from history from that specific track. So in this case, I watched two, no, three races, three, three races from Spa, from the Belgian Grand Prix, which is really cool. I watched one from a couple years ago, I think it was like 2018 or something like that. I watched 2004 and 2008. Let me start by talking about the 2004 race because it was just the coolest thing to watch. And I'll start by saying Michael Schumacher. Like I got to see Michael Schumacher race, which is so cool because the Schumacher era really is before my time. I didn't get into Formula One until like 2015-ish, and by that point, the Schumacher era was essentially over. There wasn't really much left of Schumacher, and now we got like Mick Schumacher, but well, we had Mick Schumacher, now he's kind of left the scene because no one really wants him. What's really cool is getting to see Michael Schumacher actually race, because you hear all these stories about how he's a legend, and while this one race didn't paint the entire picture, it only showed you know, a small little bit of his racing finesse or pedigree, I don't know, whatever the word is that I'm looking for. But it was so cool to watch him race. And just in general, watching a 2004 race, like the old cars are just insane. They sound insane. The sound is just ridiculous. Like when I watch Formula One now, I'll, I'll watch it and people say, oh, the cars don't sound like they used to. I'm like, yeah, well, they still sound fine. Like, they don't sound bad. Until you watch an old race from 2004 and you're like, my God, do the new cars sound terrible in comparison to what they used to sound like back in the day. Like, the, the sound of those cars is just, I could go on and on about them. They're just insanity how awesome they sound. Wow, imagine seeing those races in person. Man, jealous of anyone that got to live through that and attend in person because I wish. The design of the cars was also really, really awesome. Like seeing the older designs without the halo uh, above the cockpit is really cool. And I know the, the halo is there for safety and all that stuff. Of course, I don't disagree with the halo, but you have to admit that the Halo cars don't look as cool or as good as the old ones. And who who won the race? It was, um, ah, crap, who won that race? It was like a month ago now. I think it was Kimi, yeah, it was Kimi Raikkonen that won that race. 
And it was so cool seeing Kimmy race because when I got into Formula One, Kimmy was essentially on his way out. Uh, his career was kind of coming to an end slowly. So it's like, yeah, it's cool to see him race, but you don't really see him in his like heyday. And it was really cool to watch him like race and win. That's really cool. And this race, for those of you that don't know or that didn't watch this race in a long time, this race actually won Michael Schumacher his seventh title. So it was really cool because Michael Schumacher basically got second place in this race. So he did not come in first, but second was enough via points to net him the title, which is really, really cool. And it's just such a cool feeling to watch these races. And the even cooler part, in my opinion, is the fact that obviously all our TVs now are rectangles. They have a rectangular shape. That's just how TVs are nowadays. Back then, obviously TVs were more of a square. And when they show the video, when they show the, the footage on the channel of the races, it's square. So they have like these two massive black bars on the side and you just have this like this square image in the middle of the screen and it is just the coolest thing. It's like a vintage, well it's 20 years old now so it is vintage. It's like a vintage look to racing and it's so cool. Everything's just more pixelated. What's really cool about this race is it's modern enough that I know a lot of the people in this race. Lewis Hamilton who actually won this race which is really cool like you see young Lewis Hamilton with his hair like buzzed short winning and he's like so excited and it's just such a contrast to now you know not to say he was not he's not excited when he wins nowadays not that he really wins many races anymore but it's just so cool to see him in a younger state you got um, uh, Jensen Button was in that race and there were a couple others that I, I know I'm forgetting Nico Rosberg was in there which is kind of cool uh, yeah, it's just so cool. Like, a lot of these names, like, now I know. And looking back all the way to 2008, it's just really cool to be able to put two and two together. Like, oh, I, I know him. He, you know, he's racing this race, but then later on, he, he ends up being a commentator. Like, that's so cool. And speaking of commentators, Martin Brundle. Dude, this guy has been... How long has he been a commentator for? Because you're watching, like, the race of 2008. He's commentating. You watch the race in 2004. Martin Brundle's commentating on the race. It's like, Jesus Christ, it's 20 years of him talking over these races. It's like, oh my God, how long has he been doing it for? That is just so awesome. Like, hey, we got a turkey. We got like a family of these turkeys. All right, you're welcome, guys. You're welcome. I had to take a picture of the turkeys. I, I, it's been a long time since I had to actually stop. It's a shame because that's like my usual recording spot, like right there. But anyway, anyway, back to back to racing. Martin Brundle, like, what's really cool about him commentating those old like 2008, 2004 races is that it really ties everything together. It brings together like all these eras for me, which is really cool because yes, you have different drivers, different cars, but the one uniting factor is Martin Brundle, <laughs> which I don't know. I think that's really cool to me. I think that's really awesome. Really awesome to see the Formula One channel be a thing. I think it's great because it opens up Formula One a little bit more to the American audience because if you live in America, you know in America we don't really watch Formula One too much. You have to like actually be into it. It's not like, you know, football where everyone and then I'm talking about American football, where like the whole of the United States like comes together for Super Bowl Sunday, right? It's different. But I'm glad that they released it because it opens it up to a broader audience now and hopefully more people are gonna get into F1. And what's really cool too is like, it'll show like different highlights of different races and like some behind the scenes stuff from uh, different drivers, other races. And there's just a lot of cool stuff that this channel gives you. I love that. I think it's phenomenal. I think it's really cool to be able to have something else besides just opening up ESPN on Friday, Saturday, Sunday every couple weeks and that's it. That's all you have for Formula One is every couple weeks you have Friday, Saturday, Sunday and then it's all over. I think it's really cool to be able to watch a bit of Formula One whenever you want. 
really, really awesome. And I just really want to make a video on this because I'm a big Formula One fan, as some of you guys may see from some of my videos that I made talking about Formula One. And while it doesn't seem to be a very popular thing on my channel, but I still want to produce some F1 content because I'm just into it. And overall, I don't want to limit myself to just being a BMW or an M2 specific channel. This channel really is about my whole car journey. And part of that journey is Formula One and you know, stuff like that. You know, I collect Hot Wheels as well. You know, I'm gonna do maybe at some point a little bit of content on that. It's just my kind of car passion that I wanna show. So I know that's a bit of a slight off topic thing right there, but I wanted to kind of share this Formula One channel with you guys because I think it's really, really cool. And I hope those of you that are into Formula One are now aware that this channel exists and that it is a thing. And for those of you that aren't really into Formula One, I would definitely, definitely say, at least check it out, give it a try, watch a race or two, and just see what it's all about. You know, now we're getting, uh, we're getting back into Formula One today. Actually, today are the, fr the uh, practice sessions for Zandvoort. Yeah, I think that's the race next, or is it Monza? No, it's Zandvoort and then Monza after that. I think it's next week or the week after. And yeah, this is a really cool way just to get re-pumped up, re-excited about Formula One after this long summer break. That's gonna be it for this video. So let me know if you guys have watched this channel before. Let me know if you guys are into Formula One, what you think of this channel, and just give me your thoughts, you know? Uh, like this video if you like this video. Subscribe if you want to see more videos on my car journey, which includes my M2, some Formula One content, and some other miscellaneous stuff. And yeah, it would really mean a lot to kind of help me monetize this channel as I'm really trying to push towards 1,000 subscribers to start making money off this channel. So that's going to be it for this video. So thank you guys so much for watching. Until next time.